of me and Sebastian actually building the shelves. These are the Billy Ikea shelves and we had a lot of fun and it was really great to build but my camera started freaking out towards the end so I didn't really get to capture much. But here we are, she's built and she's here. I didn't have the energy to actually stock up my bookshelves that day or the day after because I was sick but I did do one thing. I made a plan with sticky notes. As of right now, Billy has six shelves. I'm thinking because I don't have enough books to fill it yet and Sebastian doesn't have a place to display all of his Legos yet, I will be sharing my bookshelf. I'm thinking top level, the heads, and it's a collection and I think because it's a collection, it should look pretty nice lined up. We'll kind of figure out where the rest of the Legos go. We then have a Harry Potter shelf. I have a ton of Harry Potter stuff. Realistically, it's probably gonna take up all of the second shelf. Third shelf is gonna be primarily focused on all the Sarah J Mass books and then any leftover room, because there most likely will be some, will go to adult fantasy. Anything below that is whatever's left over, frankly. Honestly, like the bottom of the bookshelf, my chair does kind of cover it, so it's not the end of the world if it's not the prettiest. I'm literally so excited, I'm shaking. Let's start from the top and work our way down. Isn't even all of them yet. Legos is taking up two entire shelves, so I'm wondering if it will look good if I put the heads like above the bookshelf, the very, very top. I don't know, I think I'm gonna try it and then just see how it looks. I did not think Harry Potter would pretty much take over an entire shelf. Interesting. Especially since I plan to get all seven. And honestly, I think once I have all seven, this shelf is going to be pretty much full. But I don't think I'm going to have all seven for at least a couple years because I don't want to buy the next one until I've finished reading the one I'm currently on. And I'm still on book number one. I've been on book number one for a long time. I'll get through like a good chunk of it and I'll take a really, really long break. And then I convince myself that I have to start over from the beginning. Don't know why I keep doing that to myself. I forgot I have a Polish copy of Harry Potter. I think this is one of those situations where I just need a bookend. This is my beautiful lady. She is from Egypt, so she's a prized possession. I just feel like she looks really good next to the Harry Potter books. Now for a shelf that I am extremely pumped about, we are going to be doing the Sarah J Mass shelf. I don't actually own all of the Akatar books. The first time I read them was through the library, but that was before I really knew that I loved Sarah J Mass. And now that I do, I actually plan to buy them soon. You and I will be going on a book haul in a little bit. <laughs> I have all the Throne of Glass except for uh, the prequel. We're actually not going to talk about that because I'm still really <laughs> sad about it and I'm not fully emotionally recovered. I have the first two Akatar books and I'm just going to stack them up this way. I believe there's two books in the series that are basically this size and one that's basically that size. So that should be up to here and then she's working on the next one right now. So eventually this one is going to grow. And then, of course, I have room for the third Crescent City book when it comes out, which is also going to be tall, um, hardback like this one. I just decided to put Fourth Wing and Iron Flame here just because adult fantasy vibes. And also, I feel like that gold book is going to look really good next to the 
Crescent City Gold Book. It's already looking crazy to have this in the background. I'm absolutely loving this. Now we are going to do the fantasy shelf. And that's pretty much just all the fantasy books I have left. We might have to do a lot of books on their sides to make sure that we have room. I really do only have like three or four contemporary like romance books. So I'll probably throw those there if I can just to keep the bottom shelf entirely nonfiction. <laughs> So all the fantasy books are here um and i was able to fit the more contemporary novels and i just have the slightest bit of room which is good because it means there's room to grow but at the same time i really i really just want to create the illusion of a full bookshelf at least for now so we'll have to rearrange or something And then, of course, I have my little book stamp, and whenever I get a new book, I'm able to stamp, and it says Ruby's Library, and I think that's the cutest thing ever. And now comes the final shelf. The stack of books I have for this shelf is absolutely tiny. I'm hoping to grow this shelf now that I'm older. I feel like I gravitate a lot more towards nonfiction, but I definitely have a lot of like non-book things and storage that I think would look really good on this shelf. So I'm just going to kind of feel out what fits and what doesn't. <laughs> I may or may not have done something. I finished the nonfiction shelf and then I realized there were a couple Harry Potter things that I didn't think would fit. And I think I accidentally made a Harry Potter shrine part two. It's definitely not the cutest shelf, but it is the one on the very, very bottom. So I think it's okay. I am dead tired. It's pretty late. Either today or tomorrow, we're gonna go book shopping. Hi, it is the next day and we are at Barnes and Nobles. We are just going to enjoy this as much as we can. I have a budget for how much I can spend on books, but I don't know what books I'm going to get yet. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of like mood browse. After I'm done mood browsing, look at my budget, then kind of go from there in which books I'm actually going to get and which ones I'm not. Now, I will say I'm without a doubt getting the three Akatar books, uh, the three later ones. I haven't completed my collection yet. I am going to be reading all of the Akatar books in January. That is the goal. I want to reread all of them before I pick up House of Shadow and Fire. Whoa, House of Flame and Shadow? Where did that come from? Which I am getting and will be basically reading like my life depends on it on January 30th. I do really have my eye on Stephanie Garber's new trilogy. I believe the trilogy itself is called Once Upon a Broken Heart. After that, I'm not really sure. I'm just so excited. I have my comfiest clothes on. I have my trusty dusty book bag and I've got my headphones and I'm actually finishing up an audiobook. I think I have like 30 minutes left of it. I will probably just listen while I mood browse. I'm surprised how busy it is at Barnes and Nobles today. Maybe there's a sale. That would be... Oh. Can you imagine? Yes, I am vlogging in my car. Thank you for staring. That is one of my goals this year is to care a little bit less about vlogging in public because I can think of so many vlogs that I have recorded, but then halfway through the vlog, I stopped recording because part of it was in public and people were staring and... I am kind of done with that. Should I wait? They're just staring at me. Hopefully, um, the people in Barnes and Nobles are a lot less aggressively judgmental. One can only hope. So I started off really strong recording myself in public, even though it was pretty busy and there were a lot of starers. I don't know if the staff have had bad experience with like YouTubers or people doing stuff on camera, but very clearly there were a lot of staff who kept trying to like see what I was doing. So I pretty much just grabbed the books and went to the cafe section in kind of like a tucked away corner and I did my math. Obviously I started with the non-negotiables and then I went through all the other books that I got that I really, really wanted. 
moment, I decided to put back this beautiful copy of Little Women just because I don't plan to read it right now, so I don't really need to buy it anytime soon. And then I also put back Atomic Habits because I have read it before and I also don't plan to read it anytime soon, so I could always go back for that another day. I did get the next three Ekatar books and I'll tell you right now, this was a hefty amount of the budget but it'll be so worth it when i finally get to read them and they're my own copies instead of library copies now this next one may come as a surprise especially if you've seen some of my other videos i was adamant and i said i would never cave and i would never purchase the new edition of this book but all of the old editions i think the cheapest i've found is 70 dollars used so i caved and i'm gonna have one book in a seven or eight book series where one book is the wrong edition but i did get assassin's blade what really kind of forced my hand with this decision was yes the price considering it's still a five star read but of all the throne of glass books it is my least favorite and i just could not justify spending 70 dollars or more for me, it was really just the fact that this completes my Akatar collection. I currently have all of the Crescent Cities that are out. Literally because of this one book, I would never be able to say that I had the complete SJM collection or the mass verse. I did get Once Upon a Broken Heart. I am absolutely obsessed with how this book looks, but I was also really happy I found it in paperback. I don't know why, but I was under the impression these were only available in hardback, and I did want to look into getting the whole series and I probably would have gotten the whole series instead of Assassin's Blade except for the fact that it wasn't available. They were sold out of every single book except for this one. When I was adding stuff up though I did notice there was like a lot of damage to this one so thankfully there was a second copy. I almost didn't walk out with this beauty of a book. I really do think that I'm gonna start off February with this book and read the series in February as like a Valentine's Day treat. So these are all the books that I got from Barnes and Nobles today and I'm gonna add them to my bookshelf and then that is the end of the ultimate bookish vlog. There was almost a part four to this. I was gonna let you guys know what my TBR for 2024 was. Obviously, you already know my January TBR and the first half of my February TBR, but if you want to know my TBR from the whole year, please comment down below and let me know. Or if you just have a book that you think I need to put in my 2024 TBR, it is flexible and it is still open to editions, so feel free to put those down there as well.